Sumit Mathur is the VP Software Engineering Security in CA Technologies. Sumit is leading the product development for cybersecurity suite of products for CA Technologies. Sumit has 21 years of experience in building teams and software at scale in cloud, automation, big data, and cybersecurity domains in US and India, and has held leadership roles across companies such as CA Technologies, Cisco Systems, and Notal. Sumit also holds multiple patents in his name. So, Sumit, welcome. Thank you. It's always hard to go after lunch. So, so let's try to make it a little bit more interactive. <clears throat> I don't have to tell you, you guys probably know it better than me, that uh, businesses are more open than ever before, right? The perimeter-based security is no longer an option. Our employees need to connect to apps and data on the cloud, and our, our customers and partners have a need to connect to our enterprises to access our data or our assets, right? As, as our responsibility grows, right, the business line owners are looking for us to enable the business, but at the same time protect it. Connecting everyone with everything from everywhere is the need for the hour. But at the same time, we can't compromise the sensitivity of our data or apps or the security of our organization. So what we believe uh, in CA, the, the control point of security is now moving to more of an identity. The security of no, N-O, is no longer the case. It has turned into K-N-O-W, no. You got to know your user, you got to know their identities, and you got to know what they are doing and how risky that transaction is so that you can take correct, corrective action based on the threshold of the riskiness at real time and make those transactions secure for, your, for yourself and your for enterprise. So what we, I plan to do in the next 20 odd minutes here is focus on three different elements, right? One, how do we engage with our customers faster and better, but yet in a secure way? Two, how do we make our employees more productive in a secure way? And third, how do we prevent internal threats and external attacks? Right? So let's start with uh, let's start with how do we engage our customers in a secure way? If you look at now, what's happening is our customers are coming to us, right, through various different ways. They're either coming directly to your websites or to your applications, so they are authenticated directly with you, or they're also wanting to use their own social media identities to be able to connect to your enterprises. And the third is, as we grow your ecosystems, right, your partners are wanting us to be able to federate them with them so that the partners can use their own identities from their own organization and yet able to access within our enterprises. So three or four multiple different ways by which the access is happening or authentication is happening. So how do you prevent when you have multiple different ways for credentials to come through? How do you prevent loss or stolen credentials? How do you make corrective actions, right? So what the industry is moving around is to do user-based, user behavior risk contextual analysis so that you determine what the user behavior pattern is and take, take the authentication to the next level based on how, how the user is coming in or what the analytics is telling you to do, and do it on the real time. And once you determine the risk level, then you can increase the authentication level from single authentication to multi-authentication, multi-factor, et cetera. Basically make it out of bound authentication for those particular users in that particular scenario for those transactions. The other element of this is the customers are not coming to us through a single interface anymore, right? They are either directly using their browsers to log on to applications, websites, et cetera, or they're using mobile apps to connect to your enterprises, or in some cases, they're using the web services from their own world to connect to your enterprises, right? So multiple ways by which their interfaces are reaching out to our enterprise organizations, right? So how do you protect these interfaces? I mean, one way, or the most successful way so far, is to do some fingerprinting. So to be able to determine what device is being used, and to be able to determine if that device uh, has been used before by the same user or not. 
right? So do that device fingerprinting with every authentication session. And the other way to do it is to do some kind of session assurance, because you have cookies, et cetera, but those can be stolen, those can be hijacked by hackers. So you need a mechanism where you can combine the users, their authentication with device fingerprinting to be able to do a, a very robust session assurance to protect yourself from multiple interfaces. And the third thing is, the third dimension of the, all this is, what are they accessing in your enterprise? They can be accessing an application on your enterprise, they can be accessing something that sits on the cloud for you, or they can be accessing your APIs if you have applications that expose the rest or any kind of APIs uh, for users to consume, right? Different ways of authentication mechanism, various different ways of interfaces, various different ways of accessing your enterprise. And if you combine all these together, right, you need to provide your users a very seamless uh, experience. If you have multiple applications, multiple, multiple websites, multiple usage for a single user, you need to provide them a seamless experience through single sign-on. And you need to add that single sign-on uh, through not only the interfaces, but bring it down to the API access as well. So provide API management too. And when you combine all this together, you kind of get a product blueprint, right? So we have single sign-on at the top, so that's for authentication, social media identities, federation, session management, et cetera. Then we have advanced authentication, which is all about how do you determine the risk of a particular access, particular authentication at real time and increase your uh, out of bound authentication, maybe add multi-factor authentication on the fly. And the third one is API management. This, how do you secure your APIs uh, in the same realm as you are doing through a browser or through a mobile app, uh, et cetera. So let's double click a little bit on advanced authentication. When you have, uh, when you have a user coming into a, your banking application, for example, uh, uh, if you are in, uh, in BFSI sector, right? It's very important to know where is the user coming from. Is the user coming from a metropolitan or is the user coming from some remote parts of Eastern Europe or Africa? So where is the user located? That's, that's a data that is important for you, right? Which device is he using? Is it coming from a mobile phone? Is it coming from a desktop? Is it coming from laptop? What kind of transaction is the user trying to do? Maybe a net banking, reading my bank statement, checking read-only access of my bank account on a Saturday noon, it's probably okay. Or, or is it a wire transfer that's being tried or attempted at 2 a.m. in the night from remote part of Africa? So how do you combine geolocation, device type, et cetera, uh, and make a con informed decision on the riskiness of that transaction for that user at that particular instance of time? And when you have that kind of information, you then make a decision whether you want a software-based out-of-band authentication for him, right? So you prompt him for either an OTP or you prompt him with a set of security questions. So basically what you're trying to do is you're taking an informed decision based on very intelligent analytics through various different parameters and then deciding how do I authenticate that user for that transaction in real time. So we talk about users, we talk about experiences, we, uh, customer experiences, et cetera, right? Each of them is an identity in itself that you have to manage. But when you talk about identity, it's not only our customers and, uh, and users external to our organization. Our employees have an identity as well uh, inside the organization. And we have to manage these identities through a life cycle, right? And the way uh, the way the industry is moving, these identities are exploding significantly. So where earlier you always used to worry about your employees inside the premise, now it's not only your employees inside your premise, you also have to worry about their identities and their accounts in the SaaS applications that, that's residing or that they are accessing on the cloud. You also have to worry about your customers and partners 
and their identities when they come inside your organizations, right? So even though the identities are exploding, the number is exploding, the basic tenets of compliance and regulatory that you have to adhere to, right, and managing the, the process around identity lifecycle and governance around it is, remains the same. So in this complex world uh, of identity management and governance, uh, there are various different things that as in uh, somebody responsible for security in the organization you have to worry about. First one is, how do I make, uh, when a new user comes into my organization, how do I make him productive on day one? And the best way to do it is to automate provisioning. Right? Automated provisioning of his credentials, his roles, his entitlement, across the wide set of his usage. So, and and that, uh, that basically needs to be done in a way is, uh, that he can understand from a business catalog perspective. I need access to my payroll application. That is not geek speak saying that he needs access to an Oracle instance sitting on somewhere on some server, right? So you need to be able to do that identity provisioning based on a business catalog. You also we need able to do that through a very customizable workflow that is relevant to your industry, to your business, to your corporation, right? Because you have business processes that, that can't change. And the third thing is identity management and, and automated provisioning only works when you have a broad set of connectors to the target systems. Those target systems that are in play in your organizations, whether it's applications or servers or whatever it is, right? Whether it's on the cloud application or on on-prem application. So unless you have a broad set of connectors to those target systems embedded in a customizable workflow that makes sense for your business processes, right? The provisioning uh, or the identity managed lifecycle becomes very hard. The second element of this is today in today's world of e-commerce, etc., everybody's used to a shopping cart kind of an experience. So if I need access to cer certain things, right, I need to provide a very seamless experience to my employees or customers or partners where it's very easy for them to, to go and ask for that access, followed by you know, the manager approval process and things like that. And all this, when, when you do this, right, when I'm a new employee, I don't know what all I need, but somebody has told me that I should have access to payroll application. Wouldn't it be nice if I, at the same time, in the same user experience, I can show him that for users like you who have ex requested for payroll application, these are the other access that they required or they have requested for. So that you make informed decision on the same time when you're asking for access of, in, uh, of uh, roles and entitlements. One of the things that we all have to do is uh, compliance reporting, right? So at some periodic interval, you are accountable to run compliance certification campaigns so that you can certify which users have access to what application and whether they should continue to have that access or not, or whether they are orphaned, they should be taken away and things like that, right? But you want to do that at a level that is at a business process or a business catalog level, right? So, so Joe have, access to billing information or not, right? Should Sarah be able to see payroll information or not, right? So for a manager, it's very important that he's able to do it in a very quick way. He's able to do it in a very error-free way, and he's able to do it in a bulk way as well uh, for, all his uh, for all his users and employees uh, under him. So that's another aspect of identity management and governance is about compliance activities all handled in one place. The last one I want to focus about is risk analysis, right? And simulation. So when you are about to provide access or certify an, uh, or give permission for some user or a, or a partner to a certain part of your uh, uh, enterprise applications, uh, how do I know that what is my risk associated with that user? So what you see on the, on the right hand side is a screenshot, right? What it basically says is, this user had a risk which is probably shown as green, but now when he's asking for next set of uh, permissions, right, we are simulating and telling 
that now this particular user's risk level will go from green to yellow. Now, as a manager or as somebody responsible to handle all this, you understand now what risk level will happen if you grant this particular user this access that he's requesting. And you can take informed decisions about that, right? So proactively telling people and updating their risk scores in real time so that you take informed decisions is a critical part of your identity management uh, and governance uh, lifecycle. So let's move to the third part. Uh, and this is something that is all over the press. You hear about it. No organization today uh, is, uh, is comfortable or feels safe about it, right? I mean, by the time I speak to, uh, talking, almost 30,000 data records will be stolen somewhere in the world. And, the, and it's, it's a scary thought. It's a scary thought because uh, it keeps you, it not only moves, puts your organization's revenue in jeopardy, but also a reputation in jeopardy, right? And the, but the common thread for most of the security breaches that people have found is all about privileged users. We talked a lot about user privileges, but what we need to start thinking about is privileged users as well. So a lot of global organizations have concluded, based on a lot of study, that the best defense uh, to security breaches is a compliance-first security strategy. Now, for you to be able to have a very robust compliance-first security strategy, it needs a very good implementation of controls and processes around your privileged access management, about your privileged users. So the reason and the way you can address that threat all about privileged uh, users is ensuring that, like the Sure Bank uh, CISO was talking about, is vaulting your passwords. It's no longer in the Excel sheet. It's in a vault somewhere, right? And you're able to do um, uh, controls. You're able to do session recordings. So you're able to put a certain level of uh, controls and processes around privileged users uh, that makes you prevent all the internal threats that are coming around from a rogue employee, or it prevents that if some hacker or somewhere somebody from external has got an access to your privileged credentials, uh, you limit his, the exposure. Single sign-on with all authentication control to session recording and monitoring the policies, et cetera, right? This particular password was checked out for this particular SSH session to access this application. And it will be time bound and nothing else can be done with that password for, uh, for any other access at any other duration of the time or for any other applications, right? But the biggest, biggest point I want to highlight in this slide is you use the same mechanisms, you use the same series of steps to access everything from your, from your applications within your traditional data centers, to applications on your private cloud, to applications on your public cloud, right? You have a same consistent uniform mechanism to be able to do uh, uh, controls uh, across, across the deployments. So, uh, like I, we talked about, right, it's in a hybrid enterprise, you have traditional data centers, you have software-defined data, data centers, public cloud, SaaS applications, all going through the same set of security layers. What's at the bottom of this slide that's very relevant is, how do we reduce the total cost of ownership for such a solution? What we provide uh, through CA Privilege Access Manager is three different form factors. You can take a hardware appliance and just plug it in, and then you can scale it. Or you can take a software appliance, an OVF file, or you can do an AWS AMI. Mechanisms to, for you to reduce your TSO, TCO, on, on ensuring that your privilege access management is all secure for your hybrid enterprise, traditional data centers, private cloud, public cloud, same set of security principles, same set of security checks, anywhere, any application from anywhere. So let's, let's summarize. Uh, so what we did was, what we talked about is, how do I engage my customers? 
in a faster and a better way. We talked about single sign-on, right? And we talked about federated identities. We talked about advanced authentication, right? Advanced authentication, one more time, is how do you assess risk in real time based on user behavior analytics so that you can up your authentication to a multi-factor or out-of-band authentication. We talked about how do you en enable your enter em employees in a better way through your identity management, right? Customizable workflow, automate provisioning, uh, risk analysis and simulation in real time. And then we talked about how do I prevent internal threats and external attacks, which basically uh, is a concern for a privileged user's uh, management per se. So uh, the, the last point I want to highlight on that is the privileged access management product that CA has works across your traditional enterprises, private cloud, public cloud, same set of steps, same set of security principles, irrespective of what you are doing, through, a, through multi, multiple deployment options, hardware appliance, software appliance, or Amazon AMI. All right, that's all I had. Questions? Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Uh, so my question then becomes, uh, you have multi-factor authentication as well. So how do you plan to, if, you, if I'm just using out of band, so how do I negate the effect of a MITM attack for that matter? So, so in the middle attack, because what is happening is you are talking about analytics in terms of, okay, a customer who is approaching from- Device fingerprinting. Attack. The answer is device fingerprinting. So, so, so you're going to break the session here. Yes, so I, what, what you do is, uh, when I, uh, so the man in the middle attack is all about stealing your, um, so for example, I today am accessing, let's say a net banking application. I get a token, right? But that particular token has, um, has my device fingerprint on it. So CA has this patented technology where we take the signature of your device and embed it in as part of your security token, right? So if tomorrow somebody else on the same session, does the man in the middle attack, right? That session or that token will not carry the, his, his device signatures because he will try to do it from his device next time, right? And that's where we prevent man in the middle attack. Make sense? Uh, I have one more uh, question around it. There not any chance of false positive scenario. Yeah, so you're you're very right. Yeah, you're very right. So one of the one of the uh, uh, elements to evaluate how effective your implementation is because no two implementations are same, right? Uh, very recently, we just concluded a huge implementation in the largest bank here, which was doing 53 million users for three million transactions a day, right? So you had to. Uh, watch how you're, <clears throat> basically what you don't, what you're saying, if I'm reading it correctly, is you don't want to inconvenient the users who are valid users. You don't want to. No, 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 I, I mean clearly, say for example, as you have said, I'm accessing from Africa in the midnight. Right. Right, considering the fact that I may be a genuine user. Yes. And you are just stopping me. No, we're not stopping you. We're doing an out of bound authentication, so you will either get a mobile OTP, so it will be a, two-step process for you, right? But if you are sitting in India and your normal behavior is Saturday mornings you check your net banking account, right? I should not do a multi-factor authentication for you because I should be able to detect that the risk with this particular user is low at that time. No, multi-factor authentication, if it is implemented for the all the users, then it will always happen. No, 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 no. no. Okay. It's, it's okay. context-based, right? Yes, okay. It's context-based. <coughs> Yeah, that's where the customer user experience comes in, right? So there was another question somewhere, sir. <coughs> so in the PAM solution, uh, is it possible to you know go with the passwordless, passwordless like uh, thumbprint, uh, biometric uh, access kind of thing? So I'll give you uh, why I'm looking into that. Let's say if I want to give access to some of my software developer or some of my system administrator or some of my uh, uh, privileged users, okay? And still, if I though I have SSO, but there are passwords. 
and passwords are if it can be shared so can we we do we have any technology which is a completely passwordless in terms of pam or pim so i think i think the question is probably uh, more on biometrics so it's can more we, on biometric yeah. right so um uh, ca doesn't have like an wh what we have is we have integrations and connectors because we don't do a fingerprint we do, i don't think we have hardware to do that right we have integrations to do that two factor authentication and things like that. Yeah, it's a customizable. Hello. So everything you cannot put in the solution. So certain things uh, we do out of the box, like integration with two-factor authentication and all. The other part we integrate with uh, other third-party product, uh, uh, which is which is a radius call or LDAP call and, and method we can integrate with them. So it'll not be a problem. Yes. Reaching 100% near 100% security. See earlier we are not able to say that we are 100% secure. Okay. Can we just repeat the question? And, and what he's saying is, with all these advanced tools, uh, can we say that we are reaching 100% security? No. My personal opinion is, you can never say as long as humans are there. <laughs> <laughs> right? We we move from forts and forts on the hill, Golconda fort from, and now we're coming down to advanced technologies. Right? Uh, I think it depends on what the definition of near is, right? Uh, I mean, if you just oh, absolutely. To improve compared to earlier, absolutely. I think. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, but what's the alternative, sir? The alternative is to keep adopting products from companies like CA so that you can secure our enterprises. <laughs> so, uh, can I add something to yeah. this? See, I mean, your question is very right. I mean, can, can we, or when can we say we are 100% secure? Probably that's not the question, or maybe we don't have the answer for that. But let's look at where we were, like Golconda Fort to where we are. So in, in, if I do put in the IT world, earlier we was like no block, no, no access allowed, completely blocked to some VPN. Now we are talking about federation. We're talking about two-factor multi, and then we're talking about versatile authentication, which is more uh, based on the context. So we are saying that uh, it's not about being 100% secure, but we are trying to make it uncomplicated when it when it comes to you know, offering security. And the access is much more simplified. And uh, layers of security, like we came uh, as a problem in the, in the skit, that layers of security should not create a hindrance in doing business. So today, if I'm launching a mobile app, um, for doing no net banking. In fact, about seven, eight years work, we, we had an advertisement of you know, a product called eTrust, and there was an ad in which we were saying, the person is saying, please you know, give your blood sample, please give your head sample, and all of that. And like seven, eight layers, and then that guy is able to do a transaction. So we are actually moving away from that to you know, making it more simpler to do business. Security concerns will remain because, I mean, whatever we do, uh, there will also be other side to it, which <coughs> the darker side to it, will, will they'll also invent some other ways to make it more complicated. Till there is security, we will get our salaries. Detrimental for the economy. Very good, very good. That's true. But the first law of firewall is denial. Yeah. All right. So we have moved from the time where you create your own island. Yeah, so that was. That was perimeter-based security, right? I locked down the parameter, but now your customers are using it in a different way, right? Nobody was on the cloud a few years. Anything else? All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, Abit. Thank you. I think it's right there. Thanks, Abit, for <laughs> outlining precisely what we need to do about security. Absolutely. So, I hope you will try to implement your ideas in our project unicorn and that to deliver on our CEO's expectations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Amit. Thanks, you.